Oh, God. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't hear a standing ovation for that one, sir. I, sorry. Have you seen the musical? It was exclusive to one company for a while. Now it's, it's not exclusive. So you, anyone here can go to Samuel French and get the rights and put it on in your high school play. <laughs> but if you do, has anyone seen the musical, The Evil Living Musical? It's actually really funny. If you, get, if you get a chance, I don't get shit from it, so go see it anyway. <laughs> but they, the first four rows of the splatter zone, <laughs> and they're covered with plastic, and you're warned as you come in, you're going to get horrible stuff splattered on you. The great, the one thing they really capture with the stage show is just blood flying 20 feet across the stage. Somebody going, ah! And you see it live, it really is just, it's like astounding. In a movie, you go, oh, good digital, good digital. Here you go, whoa, that ain't digital, that's flying out. And in New York City, where the show was off Broadway briefly, I saw a guy coming in with a tux, a white tux. <laughs> Front row center. He was pink by the end of the performance. Because the actors know that. They go, oh, oh! They go right for the guy, or because someone who's wincing, then you're doomed. He's just going to get it. If you're there like this, they're not going to touch you. But I recommend it. It's, it's, even the musical, if it's done well, is entertaining as hell. And if it's done poorly, like I saw in a few small towns, it's even more entertaining. <laughs> it's just so awesome. And every Ash character that I meet, I met a couple of these guys who played Ash. They're like, hey, yeah, hi, how are you? How's it going? <laughs> What's your problem? I gotta, you played this stupid character only a couple of times. I do it 18 days a week. <laughs> Shut up, you're acting. You got a job, fight me. <laughs> yes, all the way in the back. It's either one in. Um, so there's a Dina slash um, Army of Darkness crossover comic book where Ash meets Autologous. Ash meets Autologous. It, it exists? Yes. And um, they get Dina. I can't keep track of that stuff. They're, they're reading like rabbits, those comic books. <laughs> It sounds like a great pop. <laughs> I'm so sorry I haven't caught up on that yet. <laughs> they made even more because it was so popular, that great idea of combining those two characters from completely different worlds for no good reason. <laughs> great. So is there a point and you just want to, is that just a feel good thing? <laughs> I feel great about that. <laughs> Two characters that I don't get shit from are combined now. I get double the amount of zeros. Here's two checks for nothing for both characters. Thanks for bringing that up, lady. Yes. Keep on mentioning that you don't get shit for anything, so I assume you don't get shit for any of the massive Zenas or Zena syndication. The Zena syndication. Yeah. What do you Four bucks a run, you know, something like that. Yeah, it's on like every country. What? It's enough to put gas in your car. I'll put it that way. What do you get money for? So we can all run out and buy as many copies as possible. It's okay. You have provided me with a fabulous lifestyle, and I'm very thankful for that. I don't need anything beyond that. It's been fun. Most importantly, at the end of the day, it's just about continuing to act. The fact that you've allowed me to come into your filthy homes for 30 years, <laughs> I appreciate that. I really do. Because I don't know what else I would be doing right now. Running around parking cars in the same outfit. <laughs> the guy came up to me at the convention. He goes, I'll have a gin and tonic. I'm like, huh? What are you I'm parked in B7. Yes. Yes. Sure. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you said you had a part-time... Uh, relax this whole uh, about six days ago, I was 4,400 feet up on a mountaintop, looking 360 degrees and seeing zero humans. <laughs> zero humans. And then I'm here. <laughs> Back in New York. It took, me, it took two hours to get from, uh, what's that crappy town in New Jersey? Uh, <laughs> Newark, that's the town. <laughs> Detroit, what are you talking about? <laughs> Newark 
the Garden State compared to Detroit. Um, where were we? we uh, did we get there? Okay, yes. particular property that I would like to make my own. A series of my own. That I could own, like Matt Nix on the burn notice. Where's my series? Give me my series. I don't want to work that hard. That's a lot of work. It's like owning a shop. You ain't going nowhere. Bruce, open a restaurant. Are you crazy? I'd have to show up. Yes. In your book, there's a photograph of you as the geeky potato chip guy. Photograph of me in my book is the geeky potato potato chip guy, yeah. yeah uh, what's like the weirdest character you've ever gotten or tried to get just for like anything? Like, what, what, what's the weirdest character you've ever tried to get like in film or in like TV shows? The weirdest character I tried to get? Yeah. Weirdest role I tried to get? Yeah. That I didn't get? Either way. <laughs> Which one do you think is the weirdest thing you've ever come across? Weirdest. I don't go for weird, but Bubba Hotep was the weirdest script I ever read. Because as you watch it, a lot of people have recommended Bubba Hotep to other people, and if they can get past the first 30 seconds about him getting cancer on his penis and busting it by jacking off, it's actually a really sweet little movie. But I, I was at that first page, and I was going, oh dear God, what is happening here? So I called, I read it and I enjoyed it, but I called Don Costarilla and I said, I only have one question with regard to Bubba Hotel. Will you see the penis? <laughs> he goes, no. I went, then I'm good. <laughs> if he was going to show that penis with cancer on it, well, even this guy was gone. <laughs> My kid doesn't have to go to college that bad. <laughs> I never went to college. Yes. Is there any role you ever passed on which you wish you Every had? role I ever passed on, that's always a great question because the assumption is that I never have passed on anything. <laughs> I never passed on anything that I cared to pass on, that I was sad later. Oh, that Star Wars role. Oh, <laughs> Indiana Jones. Oh, I should have said no to Stevie on that one. <laughs> no, it, things that I read in the script, if I don't respond to the script, because the script is the blueprint of your movie. If a script is bad, all you script writers out there, your movie will suck. Because <laughs> if your building is going this way, all the best builders are going to build it that way. <laughs> yep, there's where the building's going. And they're going to get that. So scripts are very important. So we'll have that script seminar a little bit later. <laughs> yes. As Sam Axe and Bernos, how much alcohol do you have to How much alcohol do I consume? Yeah. Have you ever seen Sam Axe drunk on the show, sir? No, he's doing tactical missions. He's shooting long distances with rifles. He's shooting traffic on his left side. Yes, so? You see, he's a former Navy SEAL. You ever seen the former Navy SEALs? When they're not getting shot at, they drink alcohol. And do I drink alcohol on the show? No. That's why I have brown bottles and green bottles. Never, rarely clear bottles. Because clear bottles, they go, oh, it's just water. But a brown bottle or a green bottle, you don't know, do you? <laughs> they kind of frown on actors drinking on sets these days. It's sort of a progressive thing that we've worked on. <laughs> and they're kind of over that. But then they've introduced Miller Genuine Draft on the show because they're getting money from them. So I have to say lines like, Mike, don't you want one? Come on. It's only 64 calories. <laughs> Back to the not getting shit uh, thing. Do I get a case of beer for saying that? Do they back up a truck, a Miller's truck, to my house? Oh, no. Another scene. Mike, I'm pissed. Now we can't go back into that bar. And they have direct TV in HD. Where is the HD set up in every room in my house? Oops, we forgot your address. Now you realize why actors say those things in movies and TV shows. Every delivery is a FedEx truck. Just like every person carrying groceries has to have a baguette sticking out of the top. Why? I have no idea. Getting some weird tangents now. Yes, right here. Do I have the AOL address? Which one is that? BCAC. BCAC at AOL.com. Yes, I do. And I spend half my time going, 
No, it's really me. It's really me. <laughs> and they always go, no way! <sighs> yes way. <laughs> no way! <laughs> Delete. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right here. Sure, try it. Um, Stand up so we can see it. The first Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2. When Ash puts on that chainsaw for the first time. The most awesome moment in movie history. What oh. was that like for you? What was that like for me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, major pain in the ass, that shot. Because <laughs> you had to... I'm cutting off, let's see, this hand. With a chainsaw. No, no, I've already cut the hand off, that's right. This was, I'm, oh, I'm cutting my... my my shotgun barrel in half. So um, it's got a fake gizmo that's making the blade run because you don't really want to have a live chainsaw in your hand. <laughs> and you're positioning it in the right in a certain position of the shotgun, and then they're setting some sparks off, which of course go right in your face. <laughs> and then you have to get a nice clean snap of the thing, and then you have to get the spin right 